Alright folks, it is 3.30 a.m. We are at a 24-hour action space in Washington, D.C. Confront white supremacy. There is people holding this space 24 hours a day. These are the community agreements. And like I said, there is people here 24 hours a day doing action, <laughs> talking to people, well, yeah, holding this space so because this is a 24 hour park. They're able to do this. They're not camping or anything. And that's where all of us are going to be. So when that happens, we're taking all of this. We're going on the road. We're taking it to the White House. We're saying we demand racial justice. It's Impeachment Square, open 24 7. You can text CONFRONT to 50409 in white supremacy now. Like I said, it's 3.30 here in D.C. Yeah. So every day of the weekday we do that because we're like, we're going to grow and we're going to wear on it. One by one and every day we're going to tell you we are still here and we're not going anywhere until this is fixed. We need five people, like five more people like you. And then we're gonna have we're gonna put a dent in it. Look we're, at all of them. Yeah, we're gonna put a dent. We're gonna put not not me, but you're gonna guys gonna put a dent <laughs> in this because we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. But this is some more information. If you're ever interested, you're always welcome to stop by. We'll be here until September 30th. Thank you so much. Yeah, can I get a hug? Yes. Okay. Jeremiah, you're wonderful. Thank you so much for talking and Jeez. stopping by. You you gonna be something. <laughs> you you can stand up here. We're gonna stand up for the people. It's gonna be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Good night. Sir, Bye, so you were just walking through the park and yeah, came I across. Yeah, I was walking through the park. Yeah, I, I, I actually work at Union Station. Okay. Yeah, so I walked in the park and I seen guys on the news and I seen this. I want to see what's going on. I seen white supremacists. You thought it was a. Yeah. Something. Oh, you thought it was a. Yeah, yeah like, a racist rally yeah, she, or she, Donald Trump. That's why. That's why I said, yeah, I came over and said, "This is a racist carnival." being facetious oh yeah but she broke it down to me like very clear like i i want to be a part of this you know yeah put a dent in it she broke it down like back in the 60s 70s they were red line they weren't showing black families homes that was in the upper areas like she broke it down I never knew that and she right yeah. she broke it down like it's uh economic injustice yeah y'all but my kind we don't know that we don't know economic justice we just like oh we 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 not gonna come up here. We're gonna stay in one area. You right. know they gotta stand in one area in Southeast. We don't come up here. We don't come up here at all. No, no black black people stay over that water. They don't come up here for nothing. If Different up, type of segregation. If they come up here, they, they doing a piece. They peeing. Or they saying they pee up. Or they um they, they got jobs up there, little little job or they doing something, but they don't come up here. I don't know why the city's like this. Like we don't get the same, like, if you go over that water, like, if this was over in Southeast by the big shed, y'all put, y'all would put a bigger dent. It's right here. If y'all in Southeast doing this shit, well, y'all put a big dent. You think? Yeah. Where's that at? The Anacostia. Okay. Hey. Hey. Hello. What's your name? What's your name? Yes. Yes. Jeremiah. If you can. Go to Anacostia with this. Yeah, so we're talking about that. We're, we're discussing like Anacostia. how we need to go to different areas. Yeah. I don't think black people need to know that white supremacy exists, but we can no, definitely. No, it's not. That's not. That's not. Go to Anacostia with this. Okay. All right. You know, then it. it, it <laughs> just because you did, and not because it's all black there. Don't worry about that. Yeah. No. You did, and because you can talk to anyone. You have, a, you have a brother like me. You can talk to anybody. So you're a bad to talk to anybody. Go to Anacostia one one hour. One hour. One hour and I bet okay. you're going to be a lot of people. I'm okay. like, I didn't know black people just so educated. I didn't I'm, know black people this, this. I didn't know the black people. Hey, I'm sure black. they're all ready. Like, and they're you, ready you to You just said something. You're like, I don't want black people to hear about white people. You never know. I feel like most of them already know that it's a thing. You don't think so? All right. 
we will have this conversation. So you can come back in a like a come back on the thirtieth, and you and I can chat. You remember me? Yeah, I remember. Of course, I remember you, Jeremiah. Thank you. Your name yeah. Is? What? Your name again? Shyler. 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 Thank you. Jeremiah, Thank I will you. remember you. I'll come back. Of course. All I'll right. see you on the thirtieth. Yeah. Have a good night. You too, man. Alright folks, so I just wanted to share this with you, the fact that there's people holding this space 24-7 to confront white supremacy, thank you. Let's take a look at these photos. Renegade Media is not Antifa. I don't even know. Why do you think that? We don't. Me personally, I am anti-fascist, I'm anti-white supremacist. But no, I don't belong to a group called Antifa. But I don't like fascism, I'll tell you that. And I interviewed a guy today that is actually here at this action about uh, it's Jaws. Let's go talk to him. <clears throat> hey, you want to tell me about Jaws? Okay, sure. So. Sh can I use your name? Sure. Shyler actually made Jaws. Shyler is the artist behind Jaws. Oh my gosh. Uh, so Jaws is Jews Against White Supremacy. And I don't know. Like most Jews in the United States, they say, you know, appear or pass as white. Not all Jews, there's a lot of Jews of color. But uh, as a whole, I think Jews have really been resting on like their history of being involved with the civil rights movement in the 60s and they like haven't really showed up for other people for like a long time and part of that is just being complacent i think like jews have been doing pretty well in the united states for the last 50 years and also um like jews in the united states have been supportive of a lot of policies in israel that other social justice groups think are just like completely unacceptable and so Jewish groups haven't been able to join in various coalitions or efforts because they're like, oh, well, someone might bring up, you know, Palestinians, and like, we can't be involved with that. Um, and so, like, I'm involved with a group called If Not Now, which is against uh, the occupation in Israel and also against white supremacy in the United States. And I think, like, the younger generation, like, recognizes that we can't be supporting things in Israel that we wouldn't support here, like military occupation, and we can't be you know, complicit in things like Steve Bannon and Donald Trump, like, um, like the biggest uh, lobby group for Israel hosted Donald Trump uh, to speak in 2015. Um, there's another, like, Jewish group that's hosting Steve Bannon, all these assholes, this come, like, this year. And it's like, you know what, like, we're, you know, we can't be that, like, I'm not interested in being part of that community, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, if they want to do that, that's their thing. But like, they're gonna lose all the young people because we're not down. Um, so yeah, Jews Against White Supremacy is, yeah, an effort to like stand up, show up for ourselves. Obviously, the white supremacists really don't like Jews, and show up for other people because like it's fucked up, you know, the way that other people are targeted and like, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so I, I guess I 
uh, interviewed at, you at the Juggalo March today. Yeah. And you were speaking about the solidarity. Yeah, well, it's like the most famous thing that we're taught growing up is like, you know, first they came for the socialists and no one spoke out, and then they came for the gypsies and no one spoke out, and then they came for me and it was too late, there was no one left to speak out for me. And so the lesson that I and other people that I respect got from that is that when they come for the juggalos or they come for immigrants or whoever, that like we gotta show up early before it's too fucking late. Um, and apparently other people haven't learned that lesson. But like we're just not gonna let them define what it means to be Jewish in the United States. Like we want I want it to be something that I can feel proud of and for me that means showing up for other people. So what does it mean to be anti fascist? Great question. Uh, I think it can mean a variety of different things. Like when I, so I grew up in Charlottesville when I was in Charlottesville when the Nazis were there, like we went in and like told the store manager at Walmart that like there were a bunch of Nazis meeting out in the parking lot and they got kicked out of the Walmart parking lot. Like that was anti fascist. So I think it just means opposing fascism with the tools that you have at hand. And like people are so obsessed with debating about oh well should you punch a Nazi? Like that's such a tiny percentage of anti fascists. Like most of it is spreading awareness. Uh, like letting people know that their neighbors are fascists or like yeah calling a restaurant being like do you know that you have like a neo-nazi book club in your restaurant um, so I mean I do believe that if you allow those groups to organize in public that they're not you're not going to convince them that genocide is wrong you know like they're you're giving them space to organize and recruit people and that's really dangerous um, you know Hitler and the Nazis start out with like you know 40 people in their group so I think you should, you know, do what you can to prevent them from growing because, you know, they're not nonviolent. Like their ideology is a direct threat to millions of people, um, either kicking them out of the country or killing them. And, you know, just by being Nazis, they're being violent, you know. So uh, that's, yeah, anti-fascist means whatever you make it mean, you know. We've seen... Uh We've been following this like development in the alt right, and seen a lot of it for for the past few months, and we've heard him say, "Rev it, rev up the uh, ovens, boys." Yeah. And uh, chanting blood and soil. And right. These. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, it's very disturbing. I, mean, I think you've seen with like PewDiePie and the other kind of like. Uh, video game celebrities yeah, it's like, like it's, it's become savvy, a joke the Gavin McGinnis and this like media savviness and they, yeah. they think it's a big fucking game I mean in Charlottesville like the KKK had a rally and everyone in Charlottesville was like you know what like we don't need to worry about the KKK like it's this all right thing that's growing like you know you can tell on the internet like I'm a nerd like you can tell what has energy on the internet like Bernie Sanders had energy on the internet Hillary Clinton didn't like for whatever reason, at least up until a few months ago, like the all right had energy on the internet. Like those people were having a great time, you yeah. know. And, like the people fighting them were not having a good time. They were like doing their duty, and that's really dangerous. Now after Charlottesville, after they killed Heather Heyer, and basically all these people were getting disowned by their families and losing their jobs, like they're not having fun anymore. Like it's not fun to be all right right now, and that's really important and that's great. Um, but yeah, like it's it's really dangerous. They're growing very quickly. They kind of were like the counterculture, like rebels, and that's a really dangerous identity for them to have. Um, sorry, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on like drunk drama, but I guess it's fine. What what time is it right now? Oh, it's like 3:30, I think. Four to four. Four to four. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, we're here 24/7. Uh, we're doing shifts. We're not sleeping here, but uh, you know, we've got people here all time in the day, all time in the night. Basically, the idea is that this is a space where people can come by anytime. Uh, if they're organizing an action, if they just want to have a conversation about, you know, Donald Trump or white supremacy or whatever, like, this is a space that's open and welcoming for people who aren't Nazis to, like, come by. What if, what if a uh, Nazi did come in here to try to talk to you? Yeah, that's, you know, luckily we haven't really had to deal with that yet. I mean, I think... You know, I think for me, I would first just try to appeal on a personal level. Just be like, look, man, like, please don't be an asshole. Like, I'm not going to come into your home and, like, yell a bunch of shit that's, you know what I mean? Like, don't be a dick. Um, I don't know how successful that would be. Probably not too successful. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. We really haven't had to deal with that. Um, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's that fun to go like heckle people by yourself, especially right now when they feel they know they're losing. Right? Like nobody wants to be associated with them anymore. Like this more rally that took place on the on the National Mall. Like they were like, no white supremacists, no Confederate flags, no foreign flags. That means swastikas. You know what I mean? Like. They were pretty clear, like, we don't want those fuckers around because they make us look bad. And, you know, it's not fun to be in that situation. So I think, yeah, they're not gleeful like they were a few months ago. And Donald Trump is, like, clearly failing miserably. And, and that was a huge source of their energy, too. So I don't know. I, I, we really haven't had to deal with that. I'm hopeful that we won't. Um, because, like, we are, you know, uh, obviously it's, like, a complicated term, but, like, we are a nonviolent campaign. Like... Uh, you know, we're not looking to fight anybody. We're not, you know, interested in that. Um, so yeah, hopefully it won't come to that. But I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that will play out. It's a good question. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we train people in de-escalation and that kind of thing is because we want to try to cool things down without having to fight. Yeah, can you speak about the de-escalation training? I overheard that when I was walking by. I thought someone was getting in a fight because they were uh, acting it out. Yeah, well, so I wasn't there for all that. I don't know. Were you there for that? The escalation. Were any of you guys here for the entire? Okay, Shyler. Yeah. Do you guys want to explain? Uh, that? What? <laughs> what am I explaining? The de-escalation <laughs> training. What about it? Like I, I, I thought someone was getting in a fight when I was walking. <laughs> no. So the de-escalation training was led by uh, Nadine, who was a uh, longtime organizer. Uh, she came in and volunteered her time to uh, train people in how to deal with a variety of different situations, be that something that seemed like almost out of this world ridiculous to something to be very realistic of dealing with a white supremacist, dealing with a journalist who's being extremely aggressive, dealing with someone who might be a counter-protester or um, an incendiary person inside of a group. Um, so teaching us how to respond to those in a way that de-escalates the situation rather than escalating it so that we continue to reflect the non-violent principles of this particular movement that we are not going to escalate situations we're not looking for violence we're looking for a non-violent way to uh, confront white supremacy at this yeah awesome you, you remember some of the techniques they oh offered? sure yeah uh, my favorite one is distraction, which is where you basically just pretend, well, I personally pretend that I know the person, and I try and make a conversation with them pretending like I recognize them from somewhere. Uh, but distraction is like, is, is engaging them in a way that is not particularly a way that they recognize, where you might be pointing out something that is not particularly true. You'd be like, oh my god, I didn't realize the Ghostbusters were on tour right now. Not particularly true, but it is a way that causes someone to stop and have to recalibrate the way that they're engaging with someone. Uh, another method would be to uh, present a non-violent uh, non front, uh, continue to chant in a, in a non-violent or non-aggressive tone, uh, sort of to calm yourself, but to present a uniform response to the person. Um, another form would be to uh, illustrate, um, what's the term? Active listening. I know that word. Active listening, where you are acknowledging the person's grievances, saying that you're willing to listen to them, engaging them in a way, but also in a way deterring them from engaging with the larger population. So allowing them to air their grievances, allowing them to yell and vent, but also making sure that you do so in a way that is a little bit more controlled and also a little more segregated from the rest of the group. Yeah, like, gas up the ovens, boys. So how would that work? Walk me through that. Like, talk to me about that. How would that work? I mean, I've done, I had a long conversation with a guy. We had a protest at APAC. And this guy was ranting about the Jews and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's fascinating. Tell me more about that. Okay, 9-11, like, when, what, how early do you think they were planning that? Because he was, like, shouting in a bullhorn. I just, like, made him explain his dumbass theories to me for, like, half an hour. And he left everybody else alone. Yeah, so engaging people to the point where they engage with you rather than... So we had that issue where someone was shouting randomly during different situations that we, or different uh, events that we were having planned that were uh, a collective experience and someone would, might be on the fringe of that and shouting in and so going up to them and really just presenting a, like, a person for them to direct their comments to and then to be receptive and be like, oh, that's an interesting point. Yes, I understand what you're saying and providing 
not necessarily validation, but at least a receptive ear that they would feel like they could express themselves and then move on whenever they wanted to leave uh, rather than shouting for hours. Yeah, it sounds like some good tactics. It's tactful and... It's great for life and your personal relationships. Well, what was it? <laughs> yeah, how do you, you think that the training helps you be conscious and aware not to get drawn into their I mean, it's anger, be, you know? Uh, I think it's always going to be a situation where someone thinks they're fully prepared until they actually see the true extent to which a person will go. push you. Yeah, so we had it role plays where people had to pretend to be a white supremacist or pretend to be someone who was being physically aggressive towards like an animal. Something that you would never want to participate in. Uh, and it was really difficult for people to inhabit that space. But at the same time, you don't understand how you will respond to those moments until you think about how far the other side is willing to go. Um, so there were a lot of instances where people would laugh because they had never considered that someone would tell them something as outrageous as like Charlottesville was staged. Um, but because they could hear it in a safe space where they were training, they could understand how they needed to respond in the future that wouldn't escalate the situation. So it was a practice ground for them. Um, but I do think it engages people in a different way to understand how to approach the situations and how to sort of breathe and center themselves that they are better able to. That would be yeah. so expensive to stage shit like that. No, but I've heard it. Oh, right. I had some, I've, I've heard those oh, ones where I've heard like, it too. Oh, I've seen no YouTube videos oh, yeah. about I watched, it. Like, I'm, probably, I'm just practicing my, like, I could listen to like, oh, damn, that sounds really Yeah, you could say it was all <laughs> That'd fake. be really expensive. Like, yeah, wow. Real and, yeah. Man. You know, I had to be, like, kidding. I'm angry and I'm pounding my fist like I know what I'm talking about. Really, I'm just shouting nonsense at you. And I'm just going to say every awful thing I've ever heard said at me. And I'm going to repeat back at you. And I'm going to watch you get really uncomfortable. Thank Those you for really my pen back. Yeah, where I make you really uncomfortable. That's the Shiloh special. Is there anything else you'd like to say? We got. I mean, Ben's the one you should be talking to. I'm not particularly... <laughs> Uh, well spoken or <laughs> mid sided. <laughs> uh, you know, come join us. We're always welcoming people, we're always welcoming volunteers. Uh, come visit. Oh, yeah, what's happening in March? The White House every day. Join us with the White House. We have on the weekdays, Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. We always leave like clockwork. We're gonna go and march in front of the White House. And make our songs and our issues known. Where are um, we right now? Where is it? Text Park? confront to 50409. Yeah. Confront? Confront? Not comfort. Confront in, in to Square five. is also formally known as Farragut Square. Uh, it's just like maybe three, four blocks from the White House. Yeah. Participate. They love us. They love having us visit. Participate. So. Yeah. That's okay. the biggest thing is just participate. Yeah. Like come join us rather than watching it. You can also find info on the hashtag confront white supremacy. And you can visit our Twitter and our Facebook at Seville 2 DC. That's the number two, Seville 2 DC, because we marched 180 miles from Charlottesville to DC. Uh, yeah. And I don't know, everyone here is amazing. Like, everyone here is like giving up their time and their energy and putting a lot of themselves into this. And it's really inspiring. Yeah, I couldn't believe when y'all are still here. I think it was like midnight when we. Nah. I'm like, they're still out there. Oh, yeah. I saw the candles. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that are. I mean, we're gonna sleep, I guess, eventually, but like, not, not real well, and not like, you know what I mean? Like, not people now. are, people are definitely. So this is a direct response to Charlottesville. Yeah, we feel like uh, what happened in Charlottesville with like open Nazis sea hiling without masks, like. That's something that happened because people feel emboldened and comfortable that, okay, well, the government's fine with that now. Um, and we think that's, you know, that's a consequence of a white supremacist administration in the White House. But also, uh, you know, you have a white supremacist budget. You have a white supremacist president. Clearly, Donald Trump has a history of being a racist. Uh, you know, his policies are racist. The people he hires, Jeff Sessions, uh, Miller, Bannon, all these people are racist. Uh, you know. It's it's a white supremacist 
government uh, through and through at this point. And so, me. you know, we don't want every city like Charlottesville to have to confront that on their own one by one. Like Charlottesville is a symptom. And so we felt like we had to come here to kind of the center of where white supremacy in the U.S. is coming from right now, which is the White House and is Donald Trump. Uh, and just start talking about impeachment because at this point, like, Donald Trump's clearly incompetent, he's clearly malicious, he's clearly evil, he's clearly dangerous. So at this point, what are we waiting for? Like, do we have to wait till he nukes somebody to get him out of office? No. You know, he's corrupt, he's, he needs to go. So yeah, we want him and all the other white supremacists out of the White House, out of D.C. Do you so. think uh, we should have a president? Like, what if we could vote? That's a great question. What if we could vote on public policy? <laughs> yeah, so Public policy with our smartphones. I'm a big fan of, um, like, a system where you can kind of delegate your vote. So, like, I could say, like, oh, well, Shiler knows the most of everybody I know about, like, and I do. let's say arts policy. And then Shiler would be like, well, the person I know that knows about the most part, you know, and so you can kind of delegate your vote to other people. So I think presidents were a really uh, advanced, progressive idea in the 1700s when it was like, okay, what if instead of a king, we had two kings and you could pick one? Yeah. Like, great system, great thinking. And those that fought in that the American Revolution ago. actually walked out of the Constitutional Convention over that one issue. They didn't, really? they didn't want a president. Oh, I didn't know that. Bullshit. Yeah, so I'm not big on presidents. I'm not big on a lot of things, but um, what, I don't what know. About my, There's what? no job that I would want Donald Trump in, let me just put it that way. Like... What's up, Shiloh for president? Is that what's going on? <laughs> okay. Hell no. That's yeah. the only thing is that the president is also only as good as his cabinet, and Donald Trump has shown a complete incompetency in choosing his cabinet members. So if you're saying Donald Trump is bad, you're also going to have to look at Mike Pence and Jeff Sessions and Betsy DeVos Pruitt and Betsy DeVos and all of these others. They're well, it's not literally the people you'd pick if you're like, hey, let's make the worst cabinet. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Who do we get to run the schools? The what about someone cabinet. that doesn't know anything about schools and doesn't like them? Great. Yeah, who's never actually sent any of her children to a public school uh, and has never participated in a public school system. But yeah. they're totally going to be okay to head the Department exactly. of Education, even though they've also come out and said that they would be okay losing their job due to the Department of Education being completely in it, like completely removed from uh, the budget. That sounds like a person I would want to be in charge of a system. Somebody who like doesn't have any investment in its right. Yeah, it sounds about you right. Know, like, you know, like no, like little requirements. Yeah, I'm rich. I'm white. I can do it. You're hired. Yay! If only that were all. It's so weird because the shit's so obvious. We do. We like, it's not rocket science. All these people are garbage. Everybody knows that. <laughs> like, what are we waiting on? I don't know. I think if we if we could vote with our smartphones on public policy, yeah. it curb I mean, a lot well, of the need for a politician in but general. No, 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 no. Okay, the, the smartphones are not the answer also because your smartphones are owned by iPhone and Amazon and, like, it's yeah, Google of, like, right. things that are, like, we are... People we bank have. on them. They have the fingerprint. Yeah, but, yeah, but like, the, those are things that are very transactional. And uh, politics is not, it should not be actually transactional. That's a problem with politics and how it's involved is that it is transactional right now. And we can't have a system where, I mean, I think that we need to meet, be more accessible to the digital age, et cetera, but like we need to sort that out. Yeah, the yeah. Expert, if it was secure. Right, the experts what say if it was no, but even in that if, Yeah, but even if it was secure, you that's You think there would still like, be cor corporate interest involved? Yeah, is what yes. You're I mean, Venmo, like our smartphones of, are who, corporate interest. Because Apple... Our, yeah, but our whole smartphone technology is corporate interest. Yeah. Everything that they, like, they, they, they data target to us is corporate interest. It's not because... I mean, half of it is because it's the best thing used, but the behind it is corporate interest. So we have to actually come to a median where we're using uh, digital technology that isn't in any one corporation's self-interest. Like, if you get Google apps, you are profiting Google. If you have an Apple or iPhone Apple technology, you're profiting Apple. Well, everybody, yeah, everyone's talking right now about Russia. Oh, Russia targeted people yeah, with they ads. Did you actually? Like, well, uh, it seems like it, but also like, you know, like people are upset about that because it's manipulative and like evil. But like that is like Melania saying, like all the companies are doing that all day, every day. 
like advertising is obviously like highly targeted manipulation and you know you now have like unique manipulation made for you by Facebook or you know whoever and like that's only going to get more powerful and it's not like the human brain is evolving to get more resistant to having you know your mind like propagandized to so I don't know I think it's bad news bears but you know ultimately <laughs> like that's that's one of the things about this this effort right it's like we're getting people off their phones into physical space meeting each other like you know like singing being in our bodies being in physical space you know like Facebook doesn't have a whole lot of sway over us here right now right we're not we're not on it you and the night so. all right <laughs> you're pointing the camera at me I hope there's a question because I don't do all of just all right what time is it now uh it's probably 4 5 it's 4 5 in the morning I have an hour and 55 minutes left all right not that I'm counting is that in your shift yes I'm so excited it's gonna be great I have an hour and 55 minutes to talk to people about ways to smash the patriarchy and fuck the scene you come here every day uh, I come here as many days as I can. I have a job that requires me to attend physically in person, as opposed to physically not in person, uh, to an office. Uh, so I do not get to be here in person every day. However, I do, you know, lend the spirit energy as much as possible. Uh, and I come here when I can. So when I have the available resources and the privilege in which to take time off, and to travel as much, uh, I do come here. Um, so, I don't know if that answers your question. Awesome, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, I'm here as often as I can. Alright, so people, I guess we'll be holding this space until September 30th here in Washington, D.C. They have deemed it impeachment square. And I guess they have more actions planned. For all that we're watching, thank you for joining us. For the trolls, get a life, learn to love yourself. And then, you know, there's no more love in your life in general. Good night, everyone. Signing off.